So just to follow up on what what these uh, recent discoveries have meant for people in uh, in hospitals or in EMT units, uh, how how do you save a person who is you know suddenly has the heart attack and you know is in the state? I mean, it's you're, you're the, the first thing is to cool the body, right? But there's a lot that we can do. Unfortunately, again, that there's a lot of challenges. One is that because we label this cardiac arrest and um, the, the usual practice across the world is antiquated. People are doing what they did in 1960, which is terrible. Okay, Nothing else in medicine has been so stagnant, yet it has so many ramifications. What we should do, so people, everyone's familiar, you know, you do chest compressions, you give oxygen, you may shock the heart, you may give drugs that are very powerful and so on, but that's really, to me, that's ancient. That's like driving a Model T Ford and being happy that you're driving. It's ridiculous, frankly. The way I would like to do this is to essentially do, recognizing the science means that we take people who die and we should connect them to catheters that will enable us to distribute oxygenated blood, nutrients, but also a cocktail of drugs like the, the Yale scientists did that will preserve the brain further and, and enable us to bring them back to life, assuming that the underlying condition that caused them to die is treatable. I can't do this to somebody who's 90 years old with metastatic cancer whose body is completely devastated. But if I myself have a heart attack, which being a man and of my age, I'm at risk of, I shouldn't die. I should be, if, if people develop these techniques, people like me, people who are, are otherwise healthy should be able to come back. Think of all the young people who die in, in athletic games. Think of people in war, unfortunately, who exsanguinate. And all these people who are otherwise healthy are all salvageable. If how how, how fast do you have to uh, use these interventions to save someone? Well, again, we haven't gone into too many details of this, but in principle, again, if you look at what the Yale scientists did, and I'm talking about what should be done and what is possible, rather than a big discussion of what's been currently done, then clearly you see that there are hours of time available in which you can still restore life to a person. And in other words, Maybe if someone, for example, had a laceration, they had a blood cut, uh, a cut, and they were losing blood from a blood vessel, then you preserve them and send them to a surgeon who can go and fix it. If, on the other hand, as unfortunately we experienced with COVID, you know, you have people who had lost their entire l lungs and everything else was damaged, then clearly we can't apply these at that time. Maybe in the future, but so so it depends on the conditions. But the point is that there is a window of hours of time, if not longer.